Okay, so in the last video, we introduced some basic terminology about polynomials. Um, in this video, we're going to give you two uh, fundamental theorems, uh, basic facts about polynomial functions. So if I have a function, p of x, that is in this polynomial form, there are two things that I can tell you about such a function. The first is the factor theorem. The factor theorem says the following. It says that you take any number, so any real number, say a, and you plug it in to your polynomial. If you get zero, right, so this means you're doing you know, an times a to the n, a n minus one, a to, you plug in, you're plugging in this number. If p of a equals zero, then x minus a is a factor of p of x. Okay? Um, so in other words, that means that you can write p of x as x minus a times some other polynomial q of x. So q would be a polynomial whose degree is, is one less than the polynomial you started with. Um, in fact, this statement is, is what a mathematician might call an if and only if statement, right? Um, if you have this factor, then certainly plugging in x equal to a gives you zero, because a minus a gives you zero, right? So if you have the factor, p of a will be zero. But the more useful direction is this one. That if you plug in the number and you get zero, well, then you know you have a factor, right? So you can get started on factoring. Right? This is, if you're trying to factor a polynomial, this is a key result. Uh, but it still leaves you with one question. How do you know which numbers to plug in, right? There's lots of possibilities. Uh, there, are also, um, there are some other kind of more advanced results that tell you something about where to look for possible numbers you could plug in. Uh, these numbers, they give you zero, by the way. Um, they have a name, right? So this a, if p of a gives you zero, you would say that a is a, is a root of your polynomial, okay? So rational roots means you're looking for roots that are rational numbers, numbers that can be expressed as fractions, right? Integer over integer. Um, so there's some other results that kind of can narrow down your search somewhat, but the rational roots theorem tells you that if you're looking for, you know, nice roots, so rational or, or even better integer roots for your polynomial, um, there are only certain possibilities, right? So the rational roots says that if um, A is a root of P of X with a equal to, let's say, um, oh, maybe I shouldn't use P, M, say, oh, actually M is not great either. Um, oh, I was running out of letters. Um, U over V. Um, so U and V here are integers. Um, what can I say about these integers u and v? Well, it turns out that uh, at least, you know, I guess we should probably say that we're in lowest terms here because we could multiply and make u and v really big. Uh, if u and v are in lowest terms, um, let's specify that. Then you can say something. You can say that this uh, a0 the constant term is divisible by um, u, and a n is divisible by v. It's one way to say it, okay? Maybe there, there's nicer ways of saying it, but this is one way of saying it, okay? So, so 
the way this works in practice is you're looking for rational roots. So what you do is you, you look for all the numbers that divide evenly into the constant term. You look for all the numbers that divide evenly into the leading term, the leading coefficient. And you use those to form fractions, okay? And only fractions of that form are possible roots for your polynomial. You don't have to consider any other possibilities. Uh, so let's, let's try a quick example. And if I just kind of write down a polynomial at random, there's always, there's always a chance that it doesn't have any rational roots at all. Okay, so let's uh, let's go with this example. So let's say three x plus oh I don't know um, four. Okay, so possible rational roots. What are they? Um, well, we know that four. Four is divisible by plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four, right? Uh, two divisible by plus or minus one, plus or minus two. So that means that the possible roots, the ones that you would consider, are going to be, well, I could take plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 2. So I could have um, plus or minus 1 half. I could have plus or minus 1 over plus or minus 1, right? So plus 1, minus 1, those are possibilities. I could do plus or minus 2 over plus, so that would be plus or minus 2. Um, if I do 2 over 2, that gives me 1. Already got it. 4 over 2 gives me 2. Already got it. Um, so the other options would be plus or minus 4. Um, so that's a total of, of 8 numbers to consider, right? Which is still a fair amount of work. But it's better, it's better than, you know, just randomly guessing, right? At least, at least you've narrowed it down to 8 possibilities. Um, so how do you figure out if any of those actually work? Well, now you come back to the factor theorem. You take each of those numbers, you plug them into the polynomial. So for example, if I wanted to try uh, 1, I'd come in, I'd say, OK, so 2 times 1, right? So I could do p of 1. p of 1 would be uh, 2 minus 1 plus 3 plus 4. And I'd say, OK, so that works out to 8, definitely not 0, OK? So 1's not going to work. Then I might try p of minus 1, see where that gets me, right? And then, and then I might try p of 2, p of minus 2, p of 1 half, p of minus 1 half. Um, see if any of them work. If none of them work, then there aren't any rational roots. And that means that, well, if I was asking you to factor this polynomial, I have not given you a fair problem, right? Um, it doesn't mean there isn't a root. It just means that that root is irrational, and that means you're not going to be able to find it by elementary methods. Using factoring, anything like that, you're not going to be able to find it, right? It's going to be some ugly, irrational thing involving cube roots and square roots, and the, probably the way you would find that is using some numerical techniques that you learn later on in calculus, something like Newton's method for kind of approximating the value of the root, right? Uh, it would not be fair to ask you to find the exact value for an irrational root. Yes, there is a formula for finding roots of cubes, just like the quadratic formula, but nobody remembers it. Nobody uses it. Uh, you'd try these possibilities. If none of them worked, you'd, you'd move on to something else.